Some things in life recur over and over again. The moon, for example, goes from being not visible, which is officially called a new moon, into what is known as a half moon in its first quarter phase. And then it becomes a full moon. Of course, at this point, the moon will move on to becoming a half moon again in the third quarter phase. And finally, it will return to its original phase, which is the new moon phase, ready to repeat itself over and over again. The example of the phases of the moon and how it constantly repeats itself can be seen as an example of something that recurs in our lives over and over again. In this video, we're going to learn about functions that constantly repeat themselves, known more specifically as periodic functions. When there is a recurring pattern, we refer to the complete repetition of this pattern as a cycle in mathematics. Specifically, you can think of a cycle as the y values that map out in a way where eventually there is a constant repetition of those y values. So let's just begin by drawing out a random looking function on a graph. Well, notice how this section keeps recurring over and over again. One way to think about it is that these particular y values are constantly repeating. And this is what we mean by the cycle. But regardless of what kind of variation there might exist on the y values in order to create this particular pattern, we can also notice that there is a specific horizontal length to a cycle on this x-axis. This distance is called a period. Now, more specifically, a periodic function is defined as a function that has a pattern of y values that repeats at regular intervals. Or we can say this in a fancier way using the terms that we just learned by saying that a periodic function has a cycle that repeats constantly at a regular period. Awesome. Now, I want us to take a look at the height between the minimum and maximum value of the periodic function. If we take these values and subtract them with each other, we would get the objective height of this periodic function. So in this case, we would get four. Now, if we take this height and we divide it by two to get two, we would get what is called the amplitude. Thus, what the amplitude is, is the distance between the midpoint of the height up to the maximum or the minimum of a periodic function. Therefore, a periodic function with a larger amplitude will consequently imply that the height between the maximum and minimum points is larger as well. Great. So before we close this video, I'd like for us to think of periodic functions in a particular way. Let's say that f of x is a periodic function. This means that at a certain interval, the value of the graph would repeat and be the same. Let's say the interval is every 40 units on the x-axis. What this means then is that f of x is equal to f of x plus 40, since the y values would repeat exactly 40 units later on the x-axis. But since the same y value repeats on not just 40 units away, but also 80 units away and 120 units away and so on and so forth, we can say that f of x is equal to f of x plus 40n. As we can see, if n is equal to 3, then we are effectively saying that f of x is equal to f of x plus 120, which we now know to be true. And by using n, we are also suggesting even more than that, since, for example, if n was 4, 
then we would be saying that f of x is equal to f of x plus 160. Awesome! And finally, we can represent the same thing in a general form by saying that if p represents the period in a periodic function, then we would just be able to write it down as f of x is equal to f of x plus p times n. Well, that's the end of this lesson, and in the next lesson, we will discuss the sine function along with the cosine function. Because interestingly enough, both of these functions happen to be periodic functions as well. So, remember to keep practicing some questions, and until next time, have a good one.